We are starting to see the situation stabilise across most of regional Queensland affected by floods. But that does not mean that we are out of the woods yet. We're seeing very heavy rainfall in the Bundaberg and Burnett area and we've seen some very heavy rainfall here in the southeast, uh, with more heavy rain predicted and on the way. Uh, there is uh, a cl very uh, close watch being kept on the uh, community of St George today as they face a very long, slow wait for those waters to reach their peak and they will then face a very long, slow wait for the waters to recede. Uh, we expect to see the peak in St George sometime between uh, Sunday and Monday and we then could see those waters stay at those, those levels uh, for anywhere up to seven days. So the floodwaters around St George are there for uh, the foreseeable future. As we start to see the waters recede in many parts of our flood affected regions, uh, I think it's very important to understand that as the waters go down, that is the time when the need for patience is only just beginning. Uh, as the water recedes, that is, does not mean that life returns to normal quickly. The fact that water has receded off our roads does not mean that they will be immediately reopened. They will have to be tested and cleared before we can put traffic on them and we will put safety first. Similarly, the fact that waters have receded out of people's neighbourhoods does not mean that they can immediately get into their homes. They will have to be certified as safe by an electrician uh, and we will put that safety first. Uh, so we can certainly understand that people are impatient and people are frustrated and wanting to get across uh, flooded uh, roads and they want to get back into their homes. We ask now more than ever for patience as our emergency authorities make sure that all of these places are safe before we have vehicles at back on those roads and people back in some of those homes. Listening this morning to the uh, statewide hookup, it's clear that we have a number of communities starting the process of clean-up. I'm very pleased to see the efforts on the ground to make sure that we continue to have a good supply of food and f uh, fuel in all of these areas. We do still have more than 600 homes disconnected from power because there's floodwaters around those homes. Uh, we do, however, have teams of electricians out uh, clearing and certifying the houses that can be uh, accessed, and those teams are on the job uh, today. Uh, we are seeing two communities, uh, the people of Condamine and the people of Theodore, starting the process of repatriation. For the first time in our history in Queensland, we've had to evacuate two whole towns, Theodore and Condamine. Those people are now starting to come back into those towns and, of course, face facing uh, the heartbreaking reality of what they left behind several days ago when they were evacuated. Our thoughts go out to everybody facing uh, this terrible crisis, but I particularly say to the people of Condamine and Theodore, we understand that your whole town is suffering uh, and uh, we'll be watching with uh, very careful attention over the next few days as you start to bring the town together again. Can I thank everybody who has put their hands in their pockets and donated to the Flood Relief Appeal. Uh, today, the Premier's Flood Relief Appeal stands at $17.8 million. $5.3 million of that has come in through the banks, so that's, that's overwhelmingly uh, mums and dads digging into their own purses and wallets. So uh, more than $5 million are from ordinary Australians, uh, close uh, to uh, uh, $12 or $13 million now from corporate Australia and government. $17.8 million will make a difference, but we still need more. I look forward to uh, some of the upcoming events that are designed to raise more funds, uh, and I thank those who have donated to date. As we see the waters recede, it will be tempting for people to start to try and cross roads. Uh, we need a very big safety message out there. I'd like to invite uh, Superintendent Brian Codd to make some comments in this regard because our police and emergency workers have been facing uh, some issues out there as people have been trying to battle floodwaters. Uh, thank you, uh, Premier. Uh, good morning. Uh, one of the inspirational things that uh, you see in uh, times of devastation is just how well people come together and uh, we've uh, seen that across the length and breadth of uh, Queensland uh, where communities, emergency services and other agencies have come together and supported each other. Unfortunately this is not a time to be complacent and to perhaps uh, rest in the, uh, the, the glow of uh, community coming together. There are still uh, many, many challenges that will be in front of us as this disaster is enduring, that it will be a prolonged disaster. We are still some way away from full recovery and in some aspects months and perhaps even years. 
It is unfortunate in that context that we are still having to deal with people who are prepared to put themselves before their community, before emergency services, by making ridiculous choices in many instances, by still entering floodways against all the best advice from those who are in the know about what to do in these situations. In the last 24 hours alone, we have still had two instances across the state where people have chosen to ignore the advice for their own safety and the safety of others by driving into floodwaters, on one occasion requiring the assistance of the swift, swift water rescue efforts to save that person. This is not just a simple uh, process of those people taking up the time for their safety. That is compromising the ability of the emergency services to put their time and energies into where it's needed which is where those people are with no choice and with no ability to look after themselves need our assistance. There's a message that I would like to get across. This is not a time to be complacent. Please revisit those messages that we have been sending out about avoiding going into floodwaters. Another message I would like to convey to all and to reinforce the Premier's words is about expectations here. Yes, we are hopeful and we are very fortunate that um, the worst has not beset us. Those things that we were anticipating as worst case scenarios have not hit us as yet, but it's not a time to become complacent. People are very frustrated. We know they want to get back into their homes, but it's going to be some time before we're able to do that. Just because the water recedes from roads, or be, if it uh, recedes be, uh, beneath the floors of homes, does not mean we're ready to immediately move into those areas. The public safety choices will be made here, and we would do everything we can to return people to their homes and to their loved ones as soon as we can. The last message that I would convey in support of those is please um, all be aware that we have deployed extra police throughout the, the state. Those extra police are there to support the efforts of local communities in recovering, but they are also there to do their job, to maintain public safety and security. And if that means enforcing the law, that will be the case. And that extends to the uh, routes in terms of transport that have had to be used uh, since the highways have closed. Um, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but we need to remind ourselves that we've had a bit of luck so far. There is still more to come. And unless we stay vigilant about those safety messages, we are still putting people's lives at risk. Thank you, Premier. Now I'd invite um, Mr uh, Warren Bidson from Emergency Management Queensland. Thank you and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As we've been speaking about over a number of days now, you will be aware that we are trying to manage very carefully the deployment of our State Emergency Service volunteers across Queensland to assist communities in need. And we've also pointed out that a number of State Emergency volunteers have remained in places where we thought they would be needed. That has been borne out yesterday, last night and again this morning, where we've had uh, 350 jobs for the State Emergency Service in South East Queensland alone. That's on top of the services we are providing to flood affected areas. We had 34 jobs this morning in Brisbane and 20% of all the calls yesterday actually came from Brisbane. So our strategy in sending State Emergency Service people forward to the flood affected areas but maintaining a presence back in places where we thought they would be needed has paid off. That reinforces the need for people such as the 23 SES volunteers who are coming from Victoria to provide some assistance to us to do that. I've also accepted the offer of four Victorian SES persons to work in my coordination centre here today in the State Disaster Coordination Centre and they've just arrived so that's some more support we have. And we're looking forward to 15 New Zealanders arriving on Saturday and we're going to ask them to go and assist in Theodore. In closing, can I say that State Emergency Service volunteers are out there preparing to assist people to clean up their homes. But as the Premier and the Superintendent have said, the State Emergency Volunteers should not be expected to enter communities or homes until such time as they've been made safe by the authorities. Thank you. We are now starting to see uh, the situation stabilise, but uh, we are very, very mindful that we've got uh, some heavy weather around, uh, and I don't think we're out of the woods by a long way. 
this is a long, slow recovery, but we may see further incidents requiring emergency response before uh, we're in full recovery mode. But the scale of uh, this incident cannot be underestimated. Uh, it is the single largest event that Queensland has had to face in its history. The magnitude uh, of the area that is covered, the number of roads that are cut off, the uh, logistical supply issues are without, without precedent. Uh, I think we can be very proud of the emergency response out there. Our volunteers, our emergency personnel, our police, our defence force are working uh, on the ground in an unprecedented way and keeping people safe and that's what we want to continue. Can you stress that we Uh, well, I don't want to start comparing it to uh, budgets post-war, for example, but uh, with every disaster there are uh, many implications and uh, our priority is fixing the issues that are out there and important for people and that will have some budgetary implications, so be it, uh, we're going to put people first. There will be many people with uh, ideas out of uh, this incident and of course we'll look at them, but our first priority, without any apologies, is rebuilding regional Queensland. Regional Queensland has been hit harder than it's ever been hit before. We need to put all of our efforts uh, into rebuilding and getting these communities back on their feet as soon as possible and finding the resources to do that first. Uh, I won't be diverted from that task. Uh, Tony Abbott can have ideas. I welcome anybody who wants to talk about the issue, but our task right now is to rebuild and that's what we're going to do. Are cabinet, cabinet members out on the ground today? Uh, we have the Minister for Emergency Services is in Brisbane today. We've had a, a, an opportunity together to sit down and start with the Treasurer looking at some of the cost issues and that's been important in leading uh, up to the work that Mick uh, Slater will do. Uh, we've got the Governor-General visiting uh, the people of Condamine today and we have uh, Major General Mick Slater at, uh, visiting people in Rockhampton. Yeah, and what are you putting the cost at currently? Uh, look, it is still far too early to give anything, any accurate uh, predictions on cost. Uh, the costs uh, will not only fall to governments, uh, there will be costs for governments at the local, the state and the federal level, but there will be costs for insurance companies, there will be costs for major employers like the mining industry, the agricultural sector, and there will be costs to many families and individuals. Even with insurance and government assistance, uh, there will be a financial pressures on those families that have been affected by this. That's why the relief appeal is important and it will make a difference. A figure of $6 billion has been bandied around. Is that a ballpark figure, do you think? I think every day we're going to see people putting figures into the arena. Uh, I think until we see the waters go down and all of the assessments done, it's going to be hard to be precise about this, but if you add the costs to everybody, not only government, costs to families, costs to insurers, costs to industry and all three levels of government, then we are talking about a multi-billion dollar price tag. You mentioned the bad weather that's still to come. Given how long this has already been going for, are you confident that we can maintain such a response? We are very fortunate uh, to have uh, good friends in other states of Australia. Uh, all of the states of Australia who have who are able to offer us support have done so and we are seeing uh, great work being done to bring extra, extra uh, assistance in to relieve our emergency crews. Uh, we saw um, what we're worried about with, the, uh, with some of the rainfall is not at this stage so much greater swelling in the rivers but uh, downfalls in places that are so saturated uh, that they might see some flash flooding in places that they normally wouldn't. So uh, we don't expect major events but nevertheless it could be uh, difficult for people. We did see some evacuations last night from the caravan park in Dolby as a result of flash flooding so uh, just as people were coming back into the caravan park after the flood last week they've had to move back to the showground. So that's the sort of issue that's still happening out there on the ground. Um, Mr. Brinson, we're expecting more heavy rain over the southeast over the weekend. Um, are you expecting flash flooding and we will be expecting more calls for help? We do expect more calls for help from the State Emergency Service and that's why our strategy has been to maintain a presence in those areas where the Bureau have predicted there will be heavy rain, yes. And sorry, Superintendent, the uh, missing woman in Rockhampton, are you thinking that's hydrated at all? I'm, I'm not in a position to provide you any information on that at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd uh, direct you to the, uh, the local and district uh, management groups. They will be able to assist you with more detail. Great, thank you. Premier, you must be... Um 
parties that people like Rob Labor of running to the cause and of offering to donate as well? I'm very heartened by the generosity of Australians and people around the world who are donating to the appeal. Uh, it was terrific to see Rod Laver add his support. Uh, Rod Laver is one of uh, Queensland's legends. Uh, I met with him last year in Los Angeles and I can tell you that his heart is never very far from Rockhampton. Uh, and when it uh, goes through an issue like this, it's great to see people like uh, Rod Laver uh, come out in support of the people of Rockhampton and encouraging others to help them at a time of need. So thanks to Rod Laver. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been very, very uh, heartened by the response we've got to the appeal. Many people have yet to even come back from holidays and come back uh, to work and start to contemplate making a donation. So uh, we've got a long way to go here. The rate at which people are donating uh, is overwhelming. I thank them and we'll wait and see where we get to. Thanks, folks. Thank you.